Hello to all of my Superman fans, Dante D here, and welcome to another edition of Geekery with Dante D. Today, we are going to be talking about a topic that was actually requested by a loyal subscriber, uh, David Deister. Shout out to you, David. And uh, that is the topic of Jonathan Kent Superman. So not Jonathan Kent, the father of Clark Kent. We're talking Jonathan Kent, the son of Kal-El. Uh, yes, Superman does have a son. Uh, it is his son with uh, Lois Lane. This is just in case you're not uh, actively following comic books. Now, uh, the thing that really makes this kind of a hot topic is the fact that uh, Jonathan Kent, Superman, is uh, bisexual. And I know this is a little bit of uh, old news. Uh, I think this probably came out about maybe about a month ago. Uh, actually, the the day that the comic launched, that it was revealed that Jonathan Kent was bisexual was actually on, I think it was like National uh, Coming Out Day. And clearly, since this uh, comic book has come out and uh, it's been revealed that he is bisexual there's been a whole bunch of controversy people are thinking this is outrageous it is just ridiculous and uh that this should not be happening but uh david deister wanted my take so i am going to uh provide it for you all today and i always love having discussions about this type of thing because social issues are becoming a lot more prevalent and front and center in uh, modern day comics. Not to say that this never happened in the past, because it certainly did, especially with, uh, with 1970s comics, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, anybody, anyone ever remember that one? Uh, that one actually really tackled social issues, but that one, uh, it didn't last very long. Considered one of the greatest comic books ever, but just essentially didn't last very long. So actually, we actually did a video on, uh, on Green Lantern, Green Arrow, the original series from the 1970s. And uh, we actually talked about, touched on this topic a little bit. Are social issues in comic books actually good for sales? Uh, so I usually just try to stay a little neutral. I don't really feel um, super strongly about any of this stuff. And this is actually uh, something we've talked about on the channel before. Uh, few years ago, we posted a video uh, that actually spoke about what people like to call social justice warrior comics or SJW comic books, because uh, Marvel especially was always, always was the type, was the publisher that was providing this type of content in their books. Now, DC kind of dabbled in it as well, too, and clearly they're still doing so, but uh, usually it was Marvel that was the bigger offender of the two. So is this something that is needed in comic books? Well, I think in life, there is no black and white. There is a lot of gray. Uh, and the best way that I think the best way to look at this, I think, is is not with emotion. You have to look at it from uh, more of an objective point of view. And this is obviously something that people feel very strongly about because Superman is a character, even though this isn't Clark Kent Superman, but the, the, the symbol of Superman has been around for 80 plus years now, since 1938, okay? It was always Superman, straight guy, loves Lois Lane. So the fact that people are attached to this particular type of character does not mean that because now he's a Superman is, has come out as bisexual that they, and they're not happy about it. It doesn't mean that they're bigoted. I don't think it means that they're bigoted. It's just when people are invested in characters, especially comic book characters, uh, you know, it, it really can kind of get under their skin. The fact that writers and, and, and publishers in the modern day are trying to alter the, the, uh, the identity of the character and what they stand for. And on, on one hand, we have to consider that we are living in a day and age 
where certain things that were taboo in the past, such as LGBTQ issues, right? Uh, they're now front and center. They're now becoming more acceptable. I guess it also depends on what part of the world you live in, but uh, especially where I live, uh, LGBTQ uh, people from that community are generally welcomed. Okay. So I think the publisher's intentions are noble in, in a way because they are trying to provide the public with characters that are reflective as society as a whole. Because as we know, not everybody in society is white, straight, and male. We have all different types of people, okay? And that's not to say that all comic book characters are straight and white, because there are tons of different types of, there are tons of comic book characters. There are some that are black, there's some that are Asian, tons of new female characters as well. So, uh, you know, the, the white savior um, impression that we get of superheroes just it's it's null and void nowadays and that's those are the words that Tom Taylor the uh, the the current writer of um, of the new Superman comic has said you know he said you know it'd be a missed opportunity if you know we gave the world another straight white savior the, the, at the end of the day they're just trying to be inclusive I I get that. I think it's really important to look at the demographic of the people that are reading comic books. Okay. Uh, I actually tried to go online and search comic book reader demographics present day. Okay. Now, what I found was essentially, you know, most comic book readers are white males between the ages of 30 and say 50. And I obviously fit into that category perfectly. <laughs> I'm a white man and I'm in my thirties. Uh, but what I didn't find is what percentage of comic book readers are gay or bisexual or, you know, so on and so forth. If you know anything about this, please let me know in the comments. I think this would be very fascinating to see what percentage of readers are gay, bisexual, whatever. Because if DC's market research revealed that there is a market for, uh, for, for a, a bisexual character or a gay character, Fine, make a book about a gay character. No issues with it. But are they making these types of characters like Jonathan Kent for an audience that doesn't exist? Because people certainly do not like being preached to. They don't like being told what to think. Okay. Even if you're not a bigot, even if you have no problems with people from the LGBTQ community. I think you would take great exception to a comic book that is trying to put that in your face. I personally, I think it's very tone deaf. I think it's superficial. The fact that, you know, because now Jonathan Kent, Superman, is always going to be remembered as the bisexual Superman. Uh, you know, no one's ever going to from here on in, I don't think anyone's ever going to actually remember any of his stories. I don't think anybody is going to um, remember him for anything except for the fact that he's bisexual. <laughs> like, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Beg to differ. So is there a market for this type of content? I, I don't know. Please let me know if, uh, if you know the answer to that. But if there isn't a market for this type of content, common sense would dictate that you would not make books like this. It just wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be appropriate if you, if you ask me, because people, when they buy a product, they're expecting something, right? They're expecting characters to 
honor a particular legacy, I think. And uh, people that have been reading comic books for a very long time could probably attest to that fact that you, you, there's something you expect from certain characters. Uh, so I think, you know, th the way I look at it is, you know, take a company like Har Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson is a company that's been along for a really long time. Average age of the people that buy Harley Davidson's are probably males, white males in their, in their fifties. So people have come to expect products from Harley Davidson to look a certain way and be uh, marketed towards people from that demographic. Wouldn't it look really kind of weird if Harley Davidson all of a sudden thought that, hey, you know what? We're going to start making crotch rockets because we want to get younger people into this. That, that would be silly. I think it would it'd be weird if I if I saw a Harley Davidson crotch rocket, you know. Uh, and I don't know, there might even be one. I don't think. I've never seen a Harley Davidson crotch rocket, but, you know, you never know. Uh, also, another company, like, uh, say, Apple, okay? People come to expect something from Apple, and they come to expect something from Windows and PC. PC, generally considered... Uh, a gaming PC, right? If you're a gamer and you like to game on the computer, you will uh, game with a PC. Uh, I actually heard about Mac releasing their version of a gaming PC. And it, it's just weird. It just looks out of place. You know, with so many gamers out there um, using PC and most of the software provided uh two gamers is only for PC. I mean, you get some companies and some uh, gaming studios uh, that will release a Mac version, but for the most part, every time a new game is released is usually PS4, 5, Xbox, PC. You're not really always getting, uh, you're not always getting the, the Mac version. So it's just weird, right? So the point I'm trying to make with this is if you, your customers of are of a particular demographic. Why are you going to make books for people that really don't care about your product to begin with? Okay. And again, I might be speaking out of turn. There might be a market for, uh, for, you know, gay superheroes or, or bisexual superheroes there. And of course there are likely gay and bisexual comic book readers. If you are gay or bisexual, please let me know in the comments is, you know, is this the type of content that you want to be seeing in your comic books? Uh, because, you know, Tom Taylor, the author of uh, Superman, son of Kal-El, which is the comic book that revealed that uh, Jonathan Kent is, uh, is bisexual. He thought he, he said he wanted, again, first he said that he thought it would be a missed opportunity if they had another, you know, straight white savior. But he also said he wanted people from disenfranchised communities to have a, a character that they could identify with. So if you are from the LGBTQ community, I would like to hear from you. Are these the types of characters that you would like to be seeing in, in comic books? Is, is there a market for it? If you own comic book, if you own a comic book store, let me know. Um, is there a market for these types, for these type of characters? And I, I take great exception to the fact that Tom Taylor said, this is not a game. This is not a gimmick. Well, of course it's a gimmick. <laughs> when you're releasing a book on national coming out day, containing a, a legacy character, essentially like a Superman, uh, and, and, and you're revealing on that day that he's bisexual. I'm, I'm sorry, that's a gimmick, okay? People don't care that it's Jonathan Kent, Superman. Most people are just looking at it as Superman's bisexual, okay? E even if they haven't read a comic book ever in their life, they hear Superman's bisexual, even if they don't know it's actually his son. It's, it's strange to look at this and think that it's not a gimmick. Okay. 
And the other thing that kind of shows me that it is a gimmick is the fact that the sales of that issue, I think it was issue number five, that uh, it was revealed that he's bisexual, uh, outsold even the first issue. Okay. And now some of you out there might be like, well, there's your proof. There is a market for these type of characters. Let's take a step back. I don't think so. That book sold well. The, the sales of that book are not representative of the people that are actually reading it and actually want to read that book. The sales of that book were basically driven by collectability, like so many other comic books, okay? Even people who complain endlessly about this type of content went out and maybe bought two or three copies of this out of speculation, okay? And, and I just think that's, that's, that's stupid, okay? Because if you don't like this type of content, why would you go out and buy it? it so, you know, I, I actually don't feel sorry for you if that's the case. If, if you're complaining about this content and then you're going out and buying it because you want to flip it, I, I, I think that's... It's it's very contradictory, if you ask me. Uh, you know, I I just no. I actually want to see the sales for following issues uh, because <laughs> I, I'm sure they're not going to be as high as number five. Again, driven by speculation, and that's another reason why I think that the fact that they revealed that this character is bisexual on National Coming Out Day is superficial, and again tone deaf <clears throat> if they want to know about it in a more subtle way i don't know maybe it'd be a little better but you know it, it was it was celebrated so that everybody would buy it even the people that don't want to see that kind of stuff because again uh there's also the theory that if you don't like this type of content just don't buy it Right, you know, you don't, you, you, you don't have to be loud about it. But I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Is this something that you want to see in your comic books, or is it um, just dumpster fire material? Personally, I can tell you, um, if it's a good story, I I would read it. Am I going to go and buy that, or or buy the trade? No. If the library ever gets it, I probably will give it a try. Um, the Jonathan Kent character made his first appearance, I think, during the Convergence era. And uh, he was featured in Superman, Lois, and Clark, which was a limited eight-issue series, which I actually bought. It was actually pretty good. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think from what I can recall from that series... The Superman that we have known for 80 years ends up in the DC 52 universe. So now there are two different Superman, Supermen, uh, existing in the same universe. And uh, the Superman that we know and love is trying to keep a low profile. I thought it was cool. But again, to see now what they've done with the character, uh, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, do I feel strongly about it? Not really. Is it something that I'm actively actively going to go seek out? No. But again, would love to hear from you. Let me know what you think about Jonathan Kent, Superman, bisexual, yay or nay. Till next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.